Hey everybody, Chad with Patriot Astro, and we've done several videos on Nina's Advanced Sequencer recently, so I wanted to put together a shorter video that will cover some template management. I've been asked a few things about dealing with templates and just managing them on your system in general, so I wanted to put this video together pretty quick. So let's just dive right in. In Nina, you can see the five advanced sequences I shared in a previous video that are posted on my website. Four for mono and one for one shot color. I'll relink that video in the video description below. For some basic reorganization, start by going to options and imaging. Notice the sequence section has folder definitions and one of them is a sequence template folder. I'll go ahead and open that location on my computer here. You can see the path matches what we saw in Nina. Let's organize this a bit. Let's add a folder. I'll name it Patriot Astro as a bit of a narcissistic self-branding. Then I'm going to drag my shared sequences into this folder. Okay, let's go back to Nina. Hey, look at that. Real-time folder changes in the template section. Now I can open and close the folder in the list if I find I have too many sequences getting in the way. Here's another quick tip, and one that may seem obvious once you see it, especially if you've never clicked here before. Click a triangle near a specific sequence in the list to see summary detail. Yeah, this is one of those right in front of your face features you may have missed. I'll drag this one into the sequencer just to show you how this summary is similar to what you see in the imaging panel. It's clear and concise and can actually be pretty handy and a little easier to read. You can open these anytime to get a quick look. And again, based on complexity, sometimes I find it easier to check here rather than when it's expanded out in the sequencer. From my other videos, you likely already know how to remove an active sequence using the trash can icon on that object. We'll also look at modification and saving briefly. With a sequence loaded, I'll just edit the name. To save this as a new sequence, just click the save icon that looks like a disk. It'll save everything, including whatever's nested within that object. You should also understand that it's going to save these in the base folder. How about when I want to permanently delete a template from the list? Well, just drag it from the list down to the larger trash can at the bottom. It's a true drag and drop interface. Okay, great. So what if I want to save a portion of the sequence and not the entire sequence? Maybe I want to reuse the imaging section. Well, we'll just scroll down, rename it if you like to, and then click its save icon. Notice it saves it and that the associated icon in the save list shows it's a sequential instruction set and not a deep sky object sequence. If I drag that back here, I only get that piece as expected. Now you can drag that into new sequences anytime as a reusable object. Let's just delete this here to clean it up a bit. Just so you know about this, you can also save these items by clicking in the middle of the top bar of the object and dragging it over to the list. If you're more of a drag and drop person, this could be preferred. All right, let's head over to the Sky Atlas and add a target to a saved sequence of ours. On these deep space object sequences, there's another circular icon that can be used to save. This lets you save the sequence to include not only the instructions, but also the location data. And you can save this as a target for reuse later. If we go to targets, we can see it here. Dragging it back brings all the instructions and the target data itself with it. You can also permanently delete these targets using a drag and drop method, just like with sequences. And of course, you can save targets using the drag and drop method as well when dragging to the target panel. While talking about targets, let me grab M101 and add it to the mono LRGB sequence. So here we can see that we have loaded M101 as a mono LRGB sequence. Off to the right, I happen to have a previous saved target. This is M31, and I had previously saved this as a mono SHO sequence. So if I dragged that into an empty sequencer, it would load the targeting information as an SHO sequence, just like we saved it previously. But here's the interesting note. If you already have a sequence loaded, you can drag a previous target, regardless of its attached instructions, on top of an already loaded target sequence, and it will pull in just the location info into the active sequence. This means you can save targets framed the way you want right now, but if your saved sequences attached to those targets ever change to reflect new instructions, plugins, hardware capabilities, etc., 
you can still use the framing data in those targets by dragging the target onto a new active sequence. No need to go reframe all your targets. Okay, once again, let's go back to the Sky Atlas and load up M31 and add it to the sequence mono SHO offsets. This is great, but maybe we also want some start of sequence and end of sequence instructions loaded too. So let's drag those over. Okay, so this is a complete sequence that manages my evening from start to finish. But if I want to save this, I need to save each part separately. Or do I? Down here at the bottom, we have a save icon that lets me save a new complete sequence. The save location defaults to the Nina folder, and I can save this with any name I want as long as I keep the JSON extension intact. Let's delete this all, and then click the folder icon to load a sequence. We're going to select the saved file, and here you go. The entire sequence is back and ready to go. While I know this wasn't the most exciting video, I think building familiarity with the interface is critical, especially for those moments at 4 a.m. where you're not exactly firing on all cylinders. Hopefully you found that useful. As always, like, subscribe, and share with others. Drop me a line if you have any questions about anything you saw in this or other videos, or just have suggestions for content. There's a lot more material coming. I'm excited about some of the things we're producing right now and we'll be able to share with you soon. And as always, clear skies.